from Aspen. This is the Starship Vlog 00. I've gotten some flack for not getting to the argument I promised to address in episode zero. It's the there's nothing we can do argument based on claims about what we don't know. Here is David Nyland from DARPA speaking in Maryland about the 100 year Starship study shortly after its announcement. We are too naive to know what questions are going to be answered in the next 100 years. We don't even know which questions to ask in the next 100 years. When we say we don't know something, we typically mean ourselves, the people we've known, talked to, read, or seen on YouTube videos. And with all those, we've never encountered a viable option. We may simultaneously be hearing that something is impossible. Also, when we're trying to have serious investigations about starships and have any public presence at all, we get contacted by unbalanced people who are delusional. In the past, this would have been about ghosts, angels, demons, and spirits. Now, thanks to science fiction, aliens and UFOs are more common interpretations by brains with compromised perceptions or processing. So, if on one hand we have starship ideas that are crazy, and on the other we have credible claims of the impossibility, it's natural for us to assume or to have high confidence there's really nothing we can do. To his credit, and I really like this about Dave Nyland's argument, is he doesn't just claim that we don't know what's going to happen in the next 100 years. He provides evidence and his chain of reasoning, the hallmark of productive, rational discussion that enables us to resolve differing opinions by presenting and considering reasoned arguments. The belief that argument and debate should be about gaining greater truth where everyone benefits has been promoted for at least 2,500 years. Plato taught this while he was condemning attempts to win victory over a loser, like we're in a war or some other fight to the death. No! To the pain. I don't think I'm quite familiar with that phrase. I'll explain. And I'll use small words so that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog-faced buffoon. So, being a buffoon for intelligent analysis of how to conduct research, I went bananas when I heard this. In the early 1900s, Maxwell, Einstein, and Marconi, they could have described the performance of this. It was roughly 1900, 1905. There's absolutely nothing that you could have done in a conversation with Einstein or Marconi or Maxwell to say, give me an, a ubiquitous geolocation system and communication system in their pocket. There's nothing, nothing they could have done to create a program to get to that point. This is a great justification because the idea that we could do nothing with that evidence, it's suitable for scientific scrutiny. And when I showed up at the 2011 symposium in Orlando, I caught Dave in the exhibitor's area and proposed using a kind of magic. Well, what's magic? I was reading a GregoryBenford.com quote on Clark's Third Law that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. When I was 17, I encountered database normalization. It didn't just to solve problems that I'd struggled with fruitlessly for years, if I followed the rules of normalization, these problems never happened. It was magic. As a consultant, I used grad school statistics. It enabled us to predict the outcome of awards in nursing home lawsuits, something that every lawyer at the firm and the director of legal swore was impossible. I told Dave that if he and I could go back to the time of Marconi, we could say, oh, here's some requirements for this thing we want to develop, which needs to fit comfortably in a pocket. So we use the available technology of the day. It was called a pencil and paper. And we document our guess about the size and weight that pocket requirement implies. We know it's wireless, so it will need the capability to transmit and receive, and it will have circuits and an antenna. The size requirements leads one of us to think maybe the case could serve as an antenna. We write that option down for later consideration. Circuits require electrical power, so we know that a battery will be involved. And conclude the battery needs to be less than a third of the available space, so we record that. It'll need operating controls, a way to produce and record sound, and so on. In an hour, we have a huge amount of documented product requirements suitable for rigorous planning. That's all impossible if we've never been exposed to this process. We just performed magic according to the very reasonable view that there's nothing we could do. It's an awesome ability. And that's why I feel information systems project management is the best job in the world, because you get to do magic every day. That process of talking to Marconi is called progressive elaboration, and project management is full of this 
stuff. But Dave pointed out a couple of significant differences between the iPhone example and Starship development. First, he said correctly that we have no inkling of exactly what kind of revolutionary science and technology will be involved. We don't even know if it's ultimately possible. He also said correctly that we don't have any way to identify what will ultimately prove useful and the revolutionary science we need for Starships cannot even be clearly defined now, much less predicted. I had three books in this shoulder bag and I pulled out this one, The Cognitive Structure of Scientific Revolutions. It explains the requirements that need to be met for a scientific advance to be considered revolutionary or transformative. That's just like our initial list of iPhone requirements that we can use in the same way to guide progressive elaboration and that feeds into later planning and other activities. To get started in the right direction, we don't need to know exactly what's the key to faster than light technology. Just like we don't need to know in 1905 exactly what kind of revolutionary electronics we need in order to get started. Planning only needs an early, vague vision of success. Obviously, there are millions of things that can go wrong while we're making guesses about the future, which is why this the basic project management standard has over 600 pages of how to deal with this stuff. Let's not wait hundreds of years to develop fast and light technology, frittering away year after year on high risk research that's like blindly throwing a Hail Mary pass, only to find out in 200 years that we're in a game of hockey or chess. We can do better. We can start today to fund math and research likely to help solve our basic math and physics problems we must understand before we can make reasonable guesses about fast and light solutions. Now I've had this type of conversation conversation with business executives my entire career and everyone hates it, including me and scientists. No one wants to just sit around. Executives especially don't want their fancy corporations and staff sitting around doing nothing while eggheads are off planning. But that's how we solve tough problems. If the solutions were easy, we would have done it. And I've got personal skin in this game too. I'm committed to spend day after day, year after year, working hard and getting closer to the grave, but no closer to actually building a starship that I want to see. Meanwhile, I have to support physicists, topologists, geniuses, and geometrists algorithms and fractional dimensions who will be working together on obscure problems in languages practically no one comprehends but if we support them well eventually they will explain why we see space-time the thing that's limiting us as a process based set of interactions once they do that we can test their explanation and if it survives our best attempts to refute it we can proceed to stage two but we have to reach that milestone before proceeding and speaking of proceedings here are some coming up If you appreciate this vlog, please click like and subscribe. And if you have an opinion, I'd love to hear from you. Our Starship Pop Culture of the Week is from Star Ocean, The Last Hope, a beautiful imagining of experimental tragedy ultimately yielding faster than light success. Thanks for watching. Proceed to space. We can proceed to space too. That'll be good for the bloopers.